If you know what Jesus has done for you, you would never leave his feet also. You'd be grateful. You would know that he's taken you out of the guilt and the shame. Verse 1, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. This is John 12, 1. Where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them who sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? You see, Judas didn't understand what Mary was doing there. He who has been forgiven much is thankful much. Yes. I got a scripture to go over that too, but I, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you realize, and all of us, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you was born up in the 40s or the 50s and you didn't never experience dope or you never experienced this, we've all sinned much, people. Every one of us has been guilty much. Amen. It don't matter what you think you hadn't done. Mm -hmm. Lots of, I, I ain't never done that. Woo, that's pretty bad what you've done. <laughs> no, we've all done it. That's what the point was. But Judas went, my goodness, this thing should have been so. What's she at your feet for? When you realize what Jesus has done for you, and he's forgiven you for all the evil that we have done in our hearts, you will stay at his feet. Amen. You won't leave his feet. Matter of fact, you'll take whatever you've got to try to give unto the Lord because he has given you life and life more abundantly. People, I'm telling you, we need to stay at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Because there's going to come a day, yes. praise God, when we are redeemed and called into heaven that we will lay our crowns where? At the feet Amen. of Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. Amen. It won't be us getting all the glory. It's going to be, be him, him getting all the glory because Amen. he's the one that lived the perfect life. He's the one that went to the cross. He's the one that took our sin upon himself at the cross and took our death yes. that we may have life. He's the one. That's why we should be at his feet. Amen. Mary understood this. In her heart, she never left the feet of Jesus. At the cross, and when his feet was about five or six foot high, she's right there at the feet. Of Jesus. As he's being crucified. She didn't run off like the rest of the disciples. There wasn't nothing but John stayed with her. And Mary the mother. And Mary this one right here. At the feet of Jesus. That's the point of this whole sermon. Are you going to stay at the feet of Jesus? Or do you think well I didn't really do that much. I haven't really been that guilty. That's what we need to understand. We have been guilty. My goodness, if it wasn't for Jesus. Every one of us should be stoned to death. Yes, amen. Because under the law, sin brought death, and God showed them that sin would bring death. He did things different back then. One reason why is because there was no deliverance. Many people don't understand the Old Testament and the New. God was trying to show them many things back then, but also, if sin and demons ran rampant amongst the people, He had to cleanse that people because that bloodline would come through Israel that would bring the Messiah. So it's like a cancer. Sin in a, in a camp of individuals would be, would be like an infection in the leg. And you know, they take the bottom of the leg off if it has gangrene in the toes and it's coming up the leg, they'll take that thing off to keep the infection from going through the rest of the body. God does not enjoy killing anyone. And I don't know why Islam believes that their Allah, whatever it is, enjoys this killing. They celebrate that stuff. But our God, even back then under the law, did not enjoy this. Mm -hmm. He had to cleanse that body of that sin because before the cross of Christ, there was no deliverance for sin. Until the blood was applied to the mercy seat, there was no demons that could be cast out of anybody. It took the power of what Christ did at the cross mm -hmm. to give us the power to cast them demons out. Mm -hmm. So if the whole community got full of the demons, then it would corrupt, corrupt the whole bloodline of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's why there were certain things done that we don't understand that we make judgments upon. And I've heard politicians make judgments upon something they don't understand that was happening back then. But when we got Jesus, that's why it says in John, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. He's come to bring us truth. He's come to open our eyes to the truth. Praise God. Amen. I'm excited this morning to know the Lord Jesus. Are you excited? Do you know Jesus this morning?
Amen. Have you been forgiven? Amen. Do you feel that guilt and shame washed Amen. away? Amen. I, I'm praying you do. Because if you don't, you're still, you're still struggling. You're still struggling with that sin. In Luke 7, 44, he's talking about another woman that felt the same way. You don't have to go there. I agree with you. And he turns to the woman and says, Simon, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman says, The time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto you, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. If we realize that we have been forgiven much, we will love much. And you know what the power is of your relationship with God? It's not in your holy works. He does want us to be obedient. He enjoys that we are obedient to get up in the morning and come to church and listen to the Word of God. He enjoys that. But that's not the power of your connection. The power of your connection is love. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to love the Lord your God. This fulfills all the law and the prophets. You're supposed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Amen. It says in Psalms 91, 14, He has made me His habitation, and He has set His love upon me. Therefore, I shall deliver Him. That's where your power comes from. Your love and passion for Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why Mary had that power. That's why she was used to be the first evangelist. She's the first one that said, He is risen. He's alive. She was the first one at the tomb. Because she did not want to leave the feet of Jesus. 